Okay. Okay, hi from my side. I'm Gregor Lütolf from Switzerland. I'm working, as it is written here, at the University of Teacher Education uh, in Bern for four years now. And the last year I spent a lot of time using 3D printers or <coughs> print, printing whatever crazy stuff. I work in a team of 10 up to 15 person, people. They are all focusing on research, teaching and trying to integrate ICT, all the technology to the classroom or teach the teachers how to use the technology or what technology could be act actually used in five or in ten years. A little bit wider. The team really taking care of 3D printing is now is with the three of us. One is standing in front of you, that's me. I'm the leader of the team. Then I have the first assistant, that's this rooster. <laughs> It's just simply in German called, or in Swiss German, called Gückel. That's also for people wondering why the town or the city is called Gückel Town. It's derived from his name, or from its name, whatever you like. Then the third person is a trainee. I got to take care of, let's say, the last uh, three or four months from now on. And as you or your letter uh, arrived or your email arrived, I, I was thinking, oh, I'm kind of in a dream. I don't know. I'm, it's, it was in English and it was, I, I was not so sure to, if, if I really can make, up to, make it up to the level that it's needed. But I hope you will jump in the dream with me now and we'll see what that gets. First, there was an idea too bring a 3D printer to the classroom to use it in a <coughs> lecture that was held for several years to teach the students, they are 14 or 50 years, 15 years old, to teach them how to draw technical stuff, how, how to draw these models that you recently heard of. That's really a skill that is, will be needed in future, we think. So we went on a search, mainly on the internet. We had a look of, at all the information we could get, what pre printer should we buy first. So there was a discussion with my professor back then, that is a year ago, went around that, and he told us, oh, don't build this stuff by yourself because you lose a lot of time and I still have a lot of money to spend. Just buy one that comes assembled and start printing. So I went back to him, telling him, oh, that's a generous offer, but I don't know if I'll make it to print something out of this box because I did not know anything about the whole work workflow or whatever, but we tried it. At the same time, I told my colleague in, in, a, in, in a nearby school that I'll get the printer and we'll do the class. But I did not have any printer at this time or we just tried to make it to the date that the class started. So we decided then to buy the one on the left, the, the, the bigger one or the one a little bit more in the behind, that's a BFB 3D touch printer. We already heard about three, uh, BFP yesterday. And we, we, we tried to go with that. It arrived in the box that is under the table. We also had the chance to move in new office space. That is why the rest is just empty. We then unpacked it, set it up after some issues that I uh, not go into details because the firmware wanted to upgrade and all this stuff, te really technical, we then tried to do a first print. And I'll show you even the configuration print or the print that was bef done before. 
on YouTube if you like. It's not very useful and it, it also doesn't have a lot of sound. It just, it, it's just a video showing how excited, I think that's the, the main part I want to show you, how excited we were when the first print started out in this box because we moved around with the camera. It was really not a video that I think you will produce a better video, I hope. Um, we, we did not know what angle we could, we, we could get the best view of it and all this. That's the reason why I'm showing this video. It's really moving around and try to catch a view, on, on close view of it. That's also what the students, what the children do most of the time. They want to see what the printer is doing. It's kind of a television thing, whatever, or even better, because it's, it's moving and if they design the model and they print it afterwards, they really go like, oh no, no, move for a little bit like that and then it doesn't get an overhang and, and, and all this. Uh, it's really inter kind of interactive. With the Ultimaker that we choose, they even can tune some settings while the printer is printing. So even better, they, they're just uh, really motivated to do that. So in time, a lot of speaking, the printer finished its print. The mo one of the most annoying parts of this printer was that it moves the the table all the time down and the print is, is, is uh, finished. So most of the time we just stop this sequence to go on. So this was kind of a first print. The real first print was the, the one you see on the, on the right or you see a piece of it. It was done using the dual, dual extruder mechanism we got with this printer. We, we, it can be bought in single, dual and triple extruder design or fabrication. We, we chose the dual extruder. We did an ABS raft, this is the black piece underneath and then with some kind of transparent uh, PLA we, we printed the, this dock. This was suggested by the vendor, print this dock first. So he was not happy. <laughs> There was a dock printed first on the printer. That's, we'll come back to this story. Second print was even not the rooster. It was a polar bear. So he just got kind of angry. And to even make it worse, I tried to <laughs> make this polar bear as big as possible on the printer. I don't know why, but we wanted to go big. Why? We, we are, why going small when you can go big? So, as you see, the printer, or also we, we try to print a raft out of black ABS. Without too much luck, I would say. So we kind of stop the print, resize the object, and then you see down here, the dimensions are not really clear. I did not bring the object, but it's kind of four or five centimeters tall. We had to go with that for the moment. But it printed something that we chosen from Thingiverse, downloaded, converted and printed. We were already happy with that. Then the print pad bent. So we kind of in a pause mode. We, we had to wait or to warm it up again, print draft, then it got flat again. We also had to flip it to the other side so it it's all written in the description, you should do that and so on. But first when you see it, you just wonder, why, why is this going to happen? Is this really meant to be? And we thought it was also due to the big raft we printed first. Because this was really getting a lot of heat into this bed. And it's a composite of different materials, so I think something broke there already in the first sequence. Then. Again, we wanted to go big because we knew uh, Eiffel Tower, why not? It's one of, one of uh, my favorite buildings, at least in Europe. So you also see the cloud up here. I made the clouds yesterday evening because I could not remember where to show you an external resource. So I can click on this link, hopefully 
the copy paste st I did uh, copy paste stuff the right way so I wanted to show you what is one of the things standing in office that's a, an Eiffel Tower built up tall to 60 centimeters I built this in several pi uh, printed this in several pieces and glued them together this is the base next stage here I could have you support I don't know maybe I run out of this blue PLA so I was not able to reprint it I just have to remove this then this print this was a really silly print it just took let's say 20 hours around that because it, all these tiny little towers it had to print separately then even the next one was was uh, printing really hard because this I wanted to have all the details on it then you go up the whole tower and you see all the all the stuff that was assembled to get this 60 centimeter tower in the end I'll do this stuff to try what is what is possible at the moment we don't do this uh, in the in school for uh, in, at the moment hopefully it will be possible to do such things because also students or children they like to go big so most of the time if they're 14 or 15 years old they want to go big they want to have the whole world then you showed uh, or I saw in the book a really brilliant uh, this this picture and I also have a picture to contribute here it is the second time that Titanic sunk <laughs> that's that's the second time you see here it was really a print I started I just was thinking oh it will take 16 hours or something like that oh, I, I'll go home sleep take a little bit of sleep come back next morning and I was not in office before nine o'clock and all the others were in office already so when I entered office there was kind of so mm, mm, laughing or so when I approached the printer and looked at it I was like oops because you don't see the print head I did not uh, take the photo uh, that you see the print head but the print head was really glued together and all was that this mess is only let's say tip of the iceberg the rest was also laying around they, some of the of the guys they even put pieces that fell back to the bed that it looks even nicer yeah the rooster also laughed but not me really then it was a sunny day I think today is also not very bad I took some of the pieces or most of the pieces that were printed you see there were, I took them home to show my wife and also to do like a, a semi-professional photo shoot whatever I wanted to get better photos than with my old uh, Samsung Galaxy phone because some, sometimes you can use them on presentations uh, other, other stuff you just hide then he was back in the game I needed to get a model out of this let's say real life object whatever and one of my co-workers he also had, had a heart for him and used 123 catch 123 D catch took let's say around 90 or 100 pictures of it from each angle he did this while we were really busy but he had all the passion and and all the time doing that and then he kind of got some some first draft of the model and imported this to SketchUp and uh, he's, he's, he's really good doing SketchUp stuff he, he, uh, uh, he just went on till there was also texture so there's a, a cloud again I click on the link you're already used to it the rooster is on Thingiverse you can download it and print it by yourself if you want you can even scale it 
the biggest one I printed yet is up to, let's say, 19 or 20 centimeters. But the next project ongoing is to print it one to one or even bigger, because I want one in the office to look after people if I am not in. <laughs> I have to go back to the presentation, I think. There we left. The consequences of this action was that the rooster was reprinted and reprinted and another time reprinted. I don't even know if sometime he just got out the clue and printed them by himself. Because it's all the replicas, that's, that's a stand of my, of my display in the office. Uh, I have also other, other stuff there, you see. Um, this is, I think, 14 or 16 millimeters high. I really um, try to go even smaller, but in the end you end up with something not really similar to a rooster, and this would make it him even angrier. So I stopped there. But there is still a little bit of space. We, we, if, if I come back home, I'll try that to make it even smaller. This is the one out of, let's say, half a kilo uh, white PLA. It was really cheap, the PLA, so I printed a whole rooster there. Um, afterwards, I, I was looking up the, really the price, and I, I, yeah, I realized it was kind of an expensive rooster, but uh, he was kind of happy after that. So it's, it was worth the deal. But I had to order filament because kind of run out of filament, even the printer being so slow and moving around, look, even for, we thought looking around what we're doing. So we ordered from a local or from a Swiss uh, retailer. I think most of the stuff comes from China, but he, he offered to, to buy the uh, PLA. The problem we got, or we ran in, was that BFB had just really huge diameter in here, and we had to do some workshop hours to get another filament holder. But luckily we could do, a, let's say, work together. Also the guy from, from the housing uh, service was, was uh, helping and we, we, just, we just could make that. Uh, by the way, af I was told afterwards, it may be we already broke the whole guarantee and licensing in doing that. But I, I, did, not, I did not follow the path uh, further to uh, really know it exactly, but some guy told me it could be that you already did something that you should not do in using different PLA or different filament than the one that's originally provided by BFP. But maybe someone knows that, could, could uh, help me with that. Then we even wanted to have more improvements or uh, alter the printer in, in different way because we, we ordered a dual extruder one. And the printer has a mechanism that moves over, over this little edge to just strip off the, the last bit of, of filament that when, uh, is coming out of the extruder when it starts to print, before moving on the bed. But with this little thing, we're not, we were able to remove the filament from the active extruder but not from the second one, that was still hot and there was also running out some filament. So we designed our own thing to replace this one and move, just enlarge this edge. It was kind of a pain because altering a, ple a plexi uh, glass housing and, and all this stuff is not really easy if you don't have all the tools we just in normal office environment and don't have any workshop or whatever nearby, just the, the guy that keeps uh, the house is a little bit of a help. So we thought maybe back to field, back to the roots, back to field one, uh, let's 
get some wind of change and do research or uh, have a look for alternatives, other printers. We also got in trouble looking for a space in, in school where to leave the printer while we're not teaching the class. It does not fit uh, under, uh, easily in, a, in, in, yeah, in anywhere and you can't really transport it easily. It's uh, up to 30 kilos, so it's already a little bit of a pain and it's also slow and it was inaccurate. It, it's, it's just not the quality of the prints were not what we expected to be. So then there was also a guy from Germany that helped us a little bit on, on finding another printer. He proposed what he's using. He's using Ultimaker. So we just give it a go, ordered the first kit of Ultimaker printer and assemb started assembling. There wasn't a cloud there. Eh? I didn't miss one. There was the assembly. I just show some more information about that or just to let you know that Ultimaker has a, a wiki or, or a, all the assembly guide is online. You can just uh, follow the steps, let's say it's six steps or even more, whatever. Uh, they also have different assembly instructions for different revisions of the of the printer, but sometimes it's it's hard to understand what what's really meant by the last version now is doing better. And my trainee at home still at the moment he's assembling printers because we ordered new ones. We have to provide other schools with with printers or have to we want to provide other schools with printers. Just lend them the printers for some months or weeks to, to do project. So he's assembling with only this. He's only <coughs> seven, 17 years old, so he can understand all the English and all this stuff. I think also Google Translator does a good job. Um, that's all clear. Then we did, let's say, print, a first print. We just tried to push some filament through the extruder. It was an advice also to use first uh, ABS plastic to just glue inside, glue all the little holes and, and this stuff. Then afterwards you come with the PLA with a lower temperature. The, it does not flow out where you don't want it to. But I think that's kind of a, of a thing that we can forget because uh, the, new, the new kits are better. Another cloud here, what really the first print looked like, I just wanted to show quickly. It was uh, one of the objects uh, that we were supposed to print first. A lot of information in German. This, uh, by the way, is, is, is the, the block that we were uh, running. We just set it up before the printer arrived. We wanted to have a proper documentation of the whole process that we can also uh, profit from. I also, for, for the presentation, I, I mainly used the stuff from the, from, the, from the blog. That's really useful. We started it to be useful to ourselves, but we, now we, we think also other, pe other people are following us or are uh, looking what we, we write there. Then, let's say the printer, we were kind of sure that the printer will fit for the lesson or for the class in school. Then we moved on, tried to find a, a software to let the students design their things. So we ended up, I can summarize it, we ended up uh, using Google, Google now Trimble SketchUp and an online tool called Tinkercad that is sadly will be shut down or is already shut down. If you have still an account, you can design your stuff, but you cannot uh, create new accounts. That's a little bit of a sad thing. The screenshot is showing 3D tin, not Tinkercad, because we also did test with that. I don't have another screenshot from it. And we even, just a side hint, we, just, we even thought of using Minecraft as a design tool, because it's really easy. It has a, a, a play 
approach, a playful approach for, for the students or for the kids. They really like it. In the time they did not design the buildings in the class, in the course, they even played Minecraft beside. Uh, I saw that and I was telling them, now it's okay, now you have to stop. And, but I think we would also have matched their needs if we used Minecraft. That's also something I wanted to mention. I hope you don't get seasick following me uh, back and forth. Um, then finally we got all this stuff to school. I packed all the bags and had, had to use a car because we, uh, on the bus or whatever, uh, on the train, I, I think it would not be easy for me to carry all this stuff. More, ex more uh, impressions from this event, just some pictures. This was all back together. Then we had a big classroom. We're running this on a Wednesday afternoon. They're normally they, they have uh, free. Uh, they're not, there's no classes, but they accepted to come in for three hours to do a workshop. We even put some models up there and the printer, so they had the task to design uh, a, a play figure. They have designed different stuff. <coughs> they were in groups of three or, or four students. Then in one task they printed by themselves their, their models. Quite with a success, I would say. For the first time they touched a, uh, a 3D printer. So we ended up with, with results that maybe got even more complex. They have had some spare time or some time left, so they started designing with Tinkercad, other things, and doing even some physics experiments. They wanted to know if the boat that I printed in office, if it can swim and also carry whatever rooster they put on. So they played around with that. It was quite funny. I did not expect them to do that, but they just uh, found all the stuff and started to play around. That was the microphone. Help. I think you can fix it. Should not be too bad, otherwise we will print it. <laughs> Sorry for that. 3D. 3D. Thank you. Oh. Oh, it's broken. Make, no, no. I make double. <laughs> so, okay. Leave me some air. Thanks. There was an introductory lesson held. They were supposed to use Tinkercad, to, a Tinkercad tutorial, a tutorial by the software or the online tool itself to design a, a ship, and. To motivate them afterwards in the office, I, I went back in the office and I, the printer was not in school all the time. I had to do some maintenance. The night before we brought it to school, it broke down and I had to, do, to disassemble the whole, the whole print head and reassemble it and so on. So I printed two, two, two of the chips to motivate them. They could uh, take this at home to show the parents or even other people. So we then went on after this introduction or this introductory lessons, we then had the idea to build a model city, a futuristic model city called Gückeltown. Again, <laughs> yes, you're happy, I know. Um, He's even sitting, if, if, if you will have a closer look afterwards, he's even sitting in the middle of, of, of the whole city on Little Palest. Uh, we put him there, not, uh, not to forget that it is, <coughs> is his city. He just uh, had all the students to design buildings to match up a city for himself. I saw the big printer in the book. Maybe sometime we can print this in real life scale that the uh, that uh, the students can build their homes. Kind of a, a vision was to really have them design 
unique buildings and put them together on such a city map we designed before. There was one, quite one whole lesson making an arrangement, oh you will take a slot lot one, you two, and uh, they could raise hands, we, we had to write it down and as always in, in, in school if you don't say you get one, you get two, you get three, then you end up having a good time but uh, <coughs> you, need, you need a lot of time to, to do that but in the end they were, were happy, they even exchanged lots afterwards so the ones that wanted to, to really do large buildings or a little bit bigger ones m most of them wanted to have the nine or the three that they have a uh, lot of space to use then they went uh, designing or sketching some of their ideas that was the first uh, draft then we brought them to do some perspective drawing even because my colleague from school was telling me it's really important that they know this stuff I don't know if it's really important but it's kind of is important and we, we, can, we could combine the task with the, the fact that they have to choose the right size for the building and also the, the build volume has to, to they had to choose it, the, the maximum volume they, they could use in, in all the parts of the building was 600 uh, cubic centimeters. That was kind of a random number, but it ended up being a, a, a quite hard task for them to calculate this volume. That's you can imagine, but we did not want them to make it really precise. But they just calculated some hull that the building would fit inside. Then they went on to sketch up or to Tinkercad modeling the whole stuff. Uh, the microphone again. We're in, we're in a real fight. I can hold it if you want. I think I walk over it all the time. So it's not really popular to show his own design, but this is my design, the, the house I designed. That's the egg tower, you can find it on the city map. You will recognize it, I think it's really characteristic. Slicing it, printing it, the rooster closely looking to it. And in the end it got a good result. I put in some numbers, as you, some random numbers, not, not really, but I had to choose some numbers. So we went on with that. Then when they were finished, we just kind of checked the models, but we did not do this task properly. So we should have checked the, the, the models better before first print. Or you just have to design the, the lectures differently, the course that they are able to print the first draft really early in the, in, in the course that they have time to learn what did go wrong, alter it, reprint it, change the design. Yeah, I think that's the really big thing in it because you have these iterations, you can alter your design, reprint it, they could even make up a mixture of some of the buildings and print let's say a composite building of whatever that's a kind of a teacher thing, I think, that the, the students wanted to design more buildings and other stuff like cars and it, for the streets and so on. But the time went, as time went by, we, we did not come to this stage. Then we did first test prints, not with the, the white PLA that you see the, the town is printed off, but with, with green PLA that was just laying around. Then we were just happy to have all the things together, let them work on their designs again, even some with textures, and then printed this to first. Here you can all already see that there is a lot of detail in it, and the problem was printing it in one piece, so we then decided because of the student really had designed this 
I think really a lovely thing we designed to just slice it different or, or make it up in pieces we, so we printed this in four or five pieces I think we just cut it in, in SketchUp and exported the different parts and glued it together afterwards by the way talking of printing I I might wonder if the time is, is, is uh, if there's enough time to, to just show you uh, I left my printer at home I'm really it's not, 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 not a good thing you should not leave your printer at home except you have a direct connection to it on the internet that's the, the web GUI for my printer at home I left it there because I had to bring all the other stuff and also brought my family to Trieste so I, the, car, the car was too, too uh, small to fit in all even if the printer is, is smaller you see it's, it's running the temperature at home is 24 degrees 4 it's kind of warm no one at home please don't, don't drop all the, all the printer um, you even have a webcam that you can have a, a live view of it a little bit of a problem is that I have not enough space for the GUI on the presentation so I have to scroll down let's say we are going to print something I have a g-code file I upload it to the printer if it works it already worked it's up there I uploaded this I did not any cheating and I just go print it's loading first it's loading the file to the, the RAM it's running on a RASP on a Raspberry I have the box here just have to open it that you can have a look at you can the run that's the the box directly connected by USB to the printer that has a, even a, a Wi-Fi connection or, or another you can also plug in an Ethernet cable no problem I switch to the temperature tab because you now see that the, the, the file was, was really processed and the printer got the first command to heat up to 210 degrees if it reaches that we will see it will print this object to have an idea what the object will be you can have a preview of the g-code that's the g-code view you will see it will get a stretchy band I have in the end we can download it I can show it around so meantime we can switch to the presentation not to lose too much time I also have a, a terminal view that is kind of a yeah, code stuff but can also see what's happening we go straight to the, the webcam view back to the presentation we'll carry on the printer later on then after printing some of the buildings we realized it's taking up a lot of time we don't have this time in the class or it's, it's re we really have to improve the settings not only putting random numbers all the time but finding the settings or even finding the settings that we alter not the ones we, we leave all the time but to al which settings to alter and we ended up using for these buildings we ended up to print them all with the same settings they have only 5% infill a little bit more layers to, to cover this little infill you use less material and you save a lot of time in printing them like that but we had to play around a lot of time to find these settings that fit the, the models we needed to print then just a quick overview of the contents of this course of the course we are on <coughs> modeling with Tinkercad, modeling with SketchUp was a uh, thing then the physical model of Google Tan was a, uh, the goal let's say was one of the was the main goal then we also did a, a virtual model of it using Sketchfab to present it and 
I had to teach the students how to transform or how to slice the stuff, uh, ex even export it from, from uh, SketchUp. And we also did some 3D printing, even ex little exposition there, 3D printing. You see the cloud, it's a little <coughs> thing to load because I want you to see quickly the virtual model of Google Town, if it works. I hope so. Ending up with this. Oh, I think now it should be fine. So, as you can imagine, there's a, this virtual representation of it. Some of the buildings even have texture, but only a little. The texture is not getting printed, so we did not really cover this topic. Okay. Then there was a, let's say, some kind of evaluation. It was not really a scientific evaluation or whatever. We just handed out the, the students some sheet of paper, asking them five or six questions. Uh, it's, it's in German, but they, it, they were asked what, what they learned or what they think they learned in the course and they, if, they, if we met their expectations and, and so on. And most of them told stuff like they learned that there are 3D printers. They learned that there is software to model things, real life things. There is kind of uh, some knowledge you have to know to move around in space. The spectral recognition, you have to, 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 to know what angle you're looking at and, and really move around. I'm not going to, to follow the cloud because of lack of the time, because I want to come back to a little bit wider topic, what 3D printing at school could mean, let's say, from today on or today. There are different domains we think that would fit for the moment, or that we also did some tests. I had a, a colleague of mine, uh, He's doing statistics and he, he just told me, oh, just print out for me this one, I want to show the students. So I did the different tests with that print. We, we also have, we also developed a, a little tool that's worth showing, I think, in our office that's called 3D Slices. It was also already mentioned yesterday that uh, slices or the, the fact that <coughs> that 3D objects can be sliced in, in, in uh, 2D layers has some value to look at. We did some tool that you should guess, it's also in German, but I think it's not really hard to, to understand. You should be able to tell from these slices, you also can, can uh, move it manually, stop it and move it manually, to tell which of these models it represents. This is the level one, it's not really hard. I don't know, I, I, I was not thinking clicking on one, but I, I'll do. I just pick the right one, lucky. Lucky, really lucky. We also have uh, some explanations for teachers. We also have uh, higher levels. I don't think that all the eight levels are filled yet, but we have, let's say, kind of a level three. Let's have a look at. We also have multiple, multiple uh, tasks to fill in one level. That's just, just one of them. For the moment, it's kind of just what it is, you can have a look at, but it's not maintained. We did not find any uh, professor in mathematics to work together, but I don't know. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> we, can, we can talk. We can even talk in Swiss German, both coming from Switzerland. Um, then my big domain, geography. I'm kind of a geographer, a little bit weird, or a crazy geographer, but uh, most of geographers are a little bit crazy. Um, I print out, let's say, half of the time I print out such a 
Terra models, reliefs that I generate from DM data, from height data that you can, let's say, freely download from the internet or you will be provided by the agencies that are in charge of uh, providing the, the countries with this data. Swiss Topo, the Swiss office, is uh, providing two tests, only two little test uh, data sets. One of the Matterhorn, that's one you see here, that's uh, one really famous mountain in Switzerland. And I printed this in different shapes, I even printed it bigger, but I left this at home. This is, I think, uh, 16 centimeters, something like that. I printed it with the Ultimaker, max, maximum height 20 centimeters. But it also takes some time, even if it's fully empty. It's, it has no infill, it's just the loops. Two or three loops, I think. It's, uh, it weighs uh, around 100 grams. I will not follow the cloud, okay. Then I think the domain of music, or even if it goes, comes to instruments, I also heard a little bit uh, a flute played this morning. I printed for, for a colleague leaving us in the office, I printed him this little ukulele. He, he used it for a gig, but it broke. He was so sad. I was not able to reprint him a new one till now because I, we are so busy, all the printers are busy. We ended up having five printers at the moment, five Ultimakers, but all are kind of busy doing stuff. Also my printer at home, I think. Maybe we just missed all of the print, but I, I don't hope so. Should be up over here. Huh. You know what? <laughs> That's the demo effect. I left the printer on Friday when we left home and it was still working. I even checked it, but maybe it's just a picture that did not refresh. Let's, let's give it a try. Because the printer says it just printed all. And temperature is going again. We just missed all, but it was printed. <laughs> you see. <laughs> the problem is now, the one I could download is in white. And this one isn't white, so you won't believe me that I can really download it. <laughs> so we'll leave without that step. We can, we can do that afterwards. Okay, <laughs> then I was, let's say, already near to the end of my presentation. Music, we think that if, if students should know how an instrument is built up or why it's working, why it's making some, some sound or even some noise, we think that it could be a, a nice tool, a 3D printer, <coughs> to let them design their own, even their own instruments and print them. I was told by, my, by the teachers I, I was talking to, come back in five years, maybe we'll do that. But I want to do it earlier, so I'll try to do that, let's say, end of this year or uh, start of next year. But we'll see. Then one other thing art or play, I really think that play is, a, is, a, is an important part even if it's not a domain in school like mathematics or, 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 or sports or whatever, but I think it's really important for students to, to play around, to experiment with, 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 with the stuff because I think then they will learn to, to solve problems, to, to, to look at different situations, even other domains. And I also think that the domains will have to play together or to work together to really get the use of the 3D printers. I also try to get different uh, teachers from different domains to work together on the same project, let's say from, from arts and someone from, I don't know, math? In the end, we ended up with a lot of prints, or some prints. I put them together to, to, to get a, a good view or photo of it. I won't follow, don't worry, I fo don't follow the cloud. Uh, it will be some of the coffee break left. Um, some, let's say some of the conclusion. First, it is really a lot of fun. And fun is also 
needed to get, have motivation to learn something. If you're not having fun, I think it's a lot harder to really learn something. So the students, from, from, from what they gave us feedback, we could really learn they had a lot of fun. They really liked to work with all the tools by themselves. We did not hide anything from them. They, we just let them work with all the stuff. They were fine with that. They, uh, a 3D printer is no problem. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> a, a 3D printer for a 14 or 15 year old is not really a big task, I would say. They just master that. And for the teachers, we also like to, to have a 3D printer in the class because they come, they're motivated. The time flies. If the two, two, it was 90 minutes each lesson or the, each slot we, we, we had, it just was finished before it started. So it was really a good thing to do. And we encourage other schools now to, to do the same. To really, let's say, let us provide, for, for the moment now, let us provide them with the 3D printers or also with the knowledge, with the planning, how to run something like the Google Town. And not buy first the printer and dive deeply in the hardware and all this configuration stuff because at most or a lot of them, they, they will leave it alone before they really go into class with it. I, we just thought it could be like that. So we, we're happy, we have five printers now, we'll provide in two weeks, we'll provide one, one class with, with two printers for a week and from summer on the kind of Google Town 2 will arise. My colleague is uh, teaching the class for a second time or even a third time. After we, we, we run the class, it was really all the students talking about and also the teachers and the parents and, and even the media. And from now on, the course will, held, will be held for the whole year, each semester, and not only the second semester of the year. That was one effect that the 3D printer brought in all of this. There were, would, would be more conclusions, but I think I'll declare the game is over. Uh, you can follow in, in German, you can follow what we do. Uh, there is Google Translator, but I know Google Translator is not the real, real what would be uh, English written by a native speaker or uh, someone that really knows to uh, write a lot of English. I think we'll work together to do some of the, of the tutorial or some of the stuff I did in German to, to bring it to you in English. That would be a nice thing. But meantime, you're invited to follow us on our blog. For the last thing I want to mention for the buildings, there's not a lot of space in my car left to bring them all home. So if, if you really like, feel free to pick one of your choice. Bring it with you to your home. The only thing I ask in return is a photograph of the building where it's standing in your home. <laughs> that I will be able to publish on the blog. That's the only thing. But otherwise, feel free to serve yourself. Whatever you like. in your uh, response from the, I would say, the local authorities from uh, the school or even uh, broader uh, range, uh, have you uh, been approached by them to have, uh, to have this set as a standard um, course outside of your own school? Not at the moment yet, really. I was contacted by the, the person in charge of bringing Fab Labs to schools or trying to do a project to have Fab Labs in schools. That was, would also be the, the, the long-term uh, conclusion I had. I, the, the, the cloud, I think it's, it's good, good to, to quickly have a look at that to answer this question. I also used Wikipedia to have a look at 
the idea of the Fab Labs, or I already knew the, the idea of the Fab Labs. It's just having a small workshop in your in your school or wherever. And for the moment, they're building this for the open community. There's a lot of them uh, over the world. I can. You have a list of them. I just looked up the list yesterday, and you already see from all the parts of the world, you, you just have addresses where you can get in touch with nearby fab labs that will be, I think most of them will be happy to help you doing your stuff. There's some in Switzerland, but I wanted to show the ones in Italy. The list is not really complete, I think. They also had to stop at some point and doing all the lists, but I was contacted by the, the guy that's in charge for Switzerland. He asked me, I'm, I'm doing a proposal in, in, in Holland, in Netherlands for the moment, or in next year or whatever, to bring this kind of fab labs to schools. And he asked me if we can work together, maybe we can also do it in Switzerland or propose it to local authorities. For the moment, it's just, it was just kind of a crazy project that, that went off and we, we're getting a lot of response, but not, let's say, not really from the authorities. We will have to approach them also, that's, that's clear. But we'll do that maybe later this year or, or beginning of next year, I think. I have one more question. What's happened to the desktop feature? You have to explain the desktop feature of your computer. <laughs> Do you want to make the, the rooster angry? <laughs> <laughs> you know the, 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 the story about it? The story was I bought this for my little daughter. She's now uh, 13 or 14 months old. So I bought this to play around. I brought it to office. No one knows why, because I was a little bored or I wanted to, to stress the other guys working there. And after one or two weeks, they really lost their nerves and they <laughs> hide it in a place. That was the place they put it in. Luckily, it was not turned on this time <laughs> before I found it. But good question, thank you. <laughs>